Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another great edition of my Guru Room Show. And for the Guru Room Show today, we got a great guest, and she's an actress that stars in a new show on Paramount Plus called Sky Med. And it was the, I mean, I think it still is or was, it, it was the number one streaming show on Paramount Plus. And I'm going to be talking to one of the actresses from the series as she plays Nurse Emma. And her name is Rebecca Kwan. And I'm really looking forward to this interview and talking to her about Sky Med and about other stuff that she's done. I am Rocco Cross. I am the host at Stutters. I am the host of the Guru Room. And my interview with Rebecca is coming up shortly. This is my Guru Room. And welcome to my nightmare. Okay, um, welcome to Gru, and thank you so much for taking time out of your night and coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's so nice to meet you, finally. Yes, definitely. Definitely really, really nice meeting you two on on the screen. <laughs> yeah, no, virtually, it's, it's yeah. also very strange for me. <laughs> so, like the, the first thing I want to start you out, uh, start start out asking it's probably a question that you always get asked but um what what actually drew you to want to act like what god made you fall in love with it um for me i just i just love telling stories i loved reading stories i loved writing stories i loved acting out stories um, when I was younger, I used to just force my dad to film like really, really silly, awful skits of mine. And, you know, I, he would do it because he was a good sport <laughs> and he wanted to be supportive, but, um, yeah, I'd make him film skits. I would dress up, I would write my own stories and I want to act them out. Um, I kind oh. of didn't really know that like, that was a thing, you know, I was just being a kid and I was just having fun. Um, and it wasn't until I kind of you know, watch TV one day, I was like, I want to do that. And then I realized, kind of put one and one together that that's just kind of what that was. And I, I just love stories, truthfully. That's kind of how it started. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so like at a very young age, you were already write, writing up scripts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were very illegible and they were like more pictures and stuff rather than like full blown <laughs> ideas. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I've, always loved stories i've always loved telling them um always loved writing them too so yeah oh wow that's awesome nice thank you and how's the road been so so far i mean i i know every person goes through like the the ups and the downs and waiting to hear back from all auditions so like how's how's everything been who honestly, Rocco, it's been kind of, it's been kind of a bumpy road. It was, yeah. it's really rough. You know, um, everyone knows that guys an actor, there's so many no's and there's so many times you get so close to something that you've had your heart set on and you just invest so much time and so much thought into a character and then to not get it, it, it kind mm -hmm. of feels like you're almost losing a friend. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it really does. Cause you've invested so much heart into it and there's that dream of being able to play something that you've always wanted to on a project with people like that you've always dreamt of working with. And I think kind of losing that almost, it almost feels like a heartbreak a little bit, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it, it's been, it's been bumpy, but it's also been such an adventure. Um, it's just been so much fun and every no kind of led to another yes. So it's kind of that really corny saying that like everything happens for a reason and you know, yeah, exactly. all that stuff. So no, I'm very grateful for the opportunities that I've gotten, especially SkyMed. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, I mean, that is something like, because for everyone that goes through something like that, like you are studying to play, play someone and you're putting your heart and soul into it and making the character yours. And then they're like, oh, no, we're going with someone else. And, and uh, yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, it's definitely hard. I think every actor kind of goes through like a, a grieving process after, <laughs> especially if it's like round after round and they keep putting you through the ringer and understandably so, but it's it's definitely tough. It's definitely tough. I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> 
And what was like your 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 very first role you you ever got either for like film or television? Oh my gosh. Um I think my first role was Amy Hoffman in Paranormal Witness. I don't know if you know what that okay. show is. Okay. Okay, yeah. It's, yeah. It's like a Canadian like reenactment crime show. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that show it it kind of, it meant so much to me cuz Amy was a real was, was a real girl. Mhm. Mm and um, something completely awful happened to her. She was kidnapped by some terrible person and mm. all these things happened. So pretty much the basis of the show is that um, a psychic figured out where she was and what happened to her and then they found her, unfortunately. Um, so it was, it was really emotional. It was really, really, oh, yeah. you know, awful reading about what happened to Amy, but, um, I think I had a bunch of nightmares afterwards about Amy and just certain dreams of what happened to her. And I, it was a very visceral experience. And I think acting as Amy and being Amy, it just was, it, it, it was definitely life-changing in the sense mm. that I just emotionally was a bit drained afterwards and it took yeah, a while just to kind of shape her. Wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. It was only for one episode, but I... Yeah. I felt so honored almost that I got to play her. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously what happened was terrible and I, I can't even imagine what the family went through. I just, it's awful, but um, there's always a little bit of her kind of still with me, especially with acting stuff. It just, I kind of carry it around a little bit. It's, it's hard to shake, you know, those really tough well, roles. Well, yeah, exactly. Because like, last time I was, I was going to ask you, like, for you playing something like, like that, like, as, as someone who acts, like, um, how do you prepare yourself for a role as emotional as that? I mean, it definitely helps that I'm not myself. Um, mm -hmm. I think with roles like that, even with just auditions and self tapes like that, in my in my head, Rebecca kind of just takes a back seat, and then yeah. it's just somebody else. Um, but when I kind of come back and I realize, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was awful. I can't I can't believe that was a real thing. I can't believe that really happened to somebody, or I can't believe the amount of pain and suffering this person had to go through. And as an actor, I'm extremely empathetic. So I kind of, well, yeah. I have a really difficult time shaking any of that because it's, these are real human experiences that someone's really felt. And I think, I think it's wonderful that film and TV gets to honor those experiences. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And um, <clears throat> so, so I saw you were part of an, of another television show and I want to know how it was it like being on set for the show Taken? Oh, Taken was so much fun. Um, so Taken was a very small part. I feel like I only had like two lines or something <laughs> like that. Um, but it was, it was a lot of fun. It was like a club scene. Mm -hmm. Um, the guest star who I acted alongside was Kiana Madeira. Yeah. And she, um, basically this is like the leading up scene to before she gets kidnapped kind of thing. Okay. I just, I play her best friend and it was really fun. We got to like dance in a club and just have fun in that sense it, it's funny because with production and stuff like that you're kind of dancing to no music <laughs> you're dancing to no music so we were just kind of we were dancing we were having fun and like Kiana's so sweet she's just the best and she's absolutely <laughs> killing the industry right now she's an amazing person um so yeah it was really fun acting alongside her and watching her do her thing and just me being her best friend in it <laughs> oh, nice. so, mm. so so like in that scene like you're you're kind of singing your own lines and playing your own music in your head to like dance around to it right yeah yeah exactly exactly and like me and Kiana were trying to like play off of each other so we yeah. were like on the same beat rather than it being kind of awkward <laughs> that's why if you like watch tv and like club sequences or anything that's supposed to have loud music if yeah. you kind of see people not dancing on beat like that's why <laughs> it's like because no one knows what song we're actually listening to <laughs> Okay. <laughs> how did how did you want to get getting getting to be part of the the great series that you're part of called Sky Sky Med? Um, how did I get to being a part of it? Um, 
so it, it was a very traditional process. It was, you know, send a self tape in and just pray to the acting gods <laughs> that it goes somewhere. Um, but when I first got Emma, I was like, oh, she's so much fun. Like, yeah. She's so bubbly. She's so girly. Um, I, I grew up with an older brother. So a lot of the stuff that I'm kind of into is a little more on the tomboyish side. So I okay. definitely have a girly side, but I, I feel, I feel more comfortable with, you know, I guess more of a tomboyish vibe, I guess. But, um, Emma's just super girly. Like if, I don't know if you've seen any of the episodes, but just her yeah. outfits throughout the whole season. I'm like, this is crazy. She's like wearing hot pink on, in survival <laughs> training. Like she'll definitely not get lost. Um, but yeah, it, she was just so much fun, even just in the audition to play. Um, like one of our first scenes, like one of my audition scenes was um, she's like squealing because she's so excited that she gets a magazine because up north you don't really get any internet and yeah, yeah. she's just so excited about the little things and I think that's like one of the most wonderful things about Emma is that she finds all these little things to be so excited about okay. and she's just so new like new in the sense that she hasn't really experienced that much so every little thing for her is a new adventure or it's like something to explore and like that's what I really really loved about Emma and she was just so much fun oh sweet nice nice and for for anyone who hasn't seen the show yet can you tell us a little bit about the show and about nurse nurse Emma yeah definitely um <laughs> so Sky Med is a crazy adventure drama medical drama it's a procedural um, that kind of happens at 20k feet. There's life, there's drama, there's <laughs> affairs, there's <laughs> love, and there's heartbreak. There's a bit of everything for everyone in the show. Um, there's planes, so there's a bit of that Top Gun-esque vibe as well, mixed with Grey's Anatomy. Um, and it's honestly rooted in a character adventure. So mm -hmm. every single one of us, all eight of us have our own character arc and you just get so invested in the characters and what they're going through and how they're growing. Um, and as I said before, Emma's just kind of going through this weird phase in her life where yeah. nothing's going according to plan, even though everything that she's ever wanted for her life has been to a T a plan. Yeah, yeah. She's always wanted to be a nurse. She's always just wanted to get married. She's always just wanted all these things. And then unfortunately, working in this new place, trying to earn money for a wedding, she realizes she wants absolutely none of that. And um, she meets someone who kind of opens up her universe, pretty much. Okay, sweet, sweet. And was there any scene you like filming, filming most? Like, is there a certain scene that like, meant meant the most to you? Yeah, um, without, I guess, without spoiling it too much, or can I spoil it? Is that okay? Well, yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, okay. <laughs> Plus, you should have seen it by now, guys. Yeah, um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think my favorite scene that meant the most to me was um, any scene with Pernita Killa. He plays Chopper. That That's my, that's my body. I've interviewed him on the show about three oh. times already. That's my, that's my body. I like him. I love him. He's yeah. Just, oh, come on. Like, this is my first series regular role. And, you know, I was a bit shaky going in. I was, you know, faking it till I made it a little bit, but he made it so easy. And I'm so grateful that he played Chopper. Yeah. Um, I actually messaged him just yesterday. We talk almost every single day. Oh, and, sweet. Yeah. He's literally my best friend. Oh. I messaged him being like, you know, thank you so much for being the bestest friend you know I'm going through kind of a weird time right now in my life and I'm like you know thank you so much for being here and most of all I'm so grateful for you just being chopper like thank you for being <laughs> like the chopper to my Emma thank you so much and he's like come on man like of course like we're that's just how we are right and I was like man I love Pernit but yeah so any scene with Pernit but especially the one where we're on our radios and he says, you know, get out of your truck and then look up. And then Emma sees this entire skyline of stars. And she's kind of, she's really, really lost mm -hmm. in this moment at this, in this kind of point in time in the show. And Chopper kind of has this little speech where he says, um, you know, when I look up at them, at the stars, 
there's there's no mistakes. So whatever you decide to do, you'll be exactly where you're supposed to be. And I don't know why, but just that really, it really sat with me. And while we were shooting it, um, I, 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 like, I would hear his lines to me and, and looking up at the stars, it really, it really just felt so magical. Um, and the stars in Manitoba, in, in Winnipeg, they, they're so clear and I'm from oh, Toronto, really? so you can't, you can't really see anything here. It's just all city. So seeing the stars, it was just so beautiful. And hearing the speech is so well written. So that was definitely one of my favorite scenes. Okay. And, and, and that's, that, that's where the show was filmed at in Winnipeg, in Manitoba? Yes, in Winnipeg. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we, we filmed in uh, Selkirk as well. It's, it's kind of like a more, I, think, I guess, up north in, in Winnipeg. Okay. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know if you follow like pro wrestling or not, but one of my all-time favorite wrestlers is from Winnipeg, Chris Jericho. I don't know if you ever heard of him. I don't, but that's awesome. <laughs> and that's so great. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I always wanted to go there and say, I mean, cause you know, I, I live in Philly and I've, I've been to different places, but never like to never there yet to Canada. So I, I always wanted to go, go and see it. Cause I, I hear so much good things about it. And, and of course, like my favorite wrestlers from it and. <laughs> hey, head over one day. I know. Right. Exactly. <laughs> there's a lot of parts in winnipeg that are so beautiful just so picturesque like there's lots of forest it's very flat as a place but it's it's nice it really is nice very cold maybe don't go in the winter (laughs) but winnipeg (laughs) winnipeg manitoba summers are so beautiful they really are oh wow nice okay okay so all right yeah okay i'm putting that on my list definitely (laughs) (laughs) and like what do you why do you think the fans like your nurse emma so so much like i i went online i was like reading different different things and like a a lot of fans really real really took to her and Mm -hmm. why do you think they took to nurse emma so so much honestly i think everyone can relate to being completely lost Mm -hmm you know, not understanding why things just can't be like super neat and tidy and go according to plan, why why things haven't really turned out the way you kind of imagined them to. And um, yeah, I think it's so easy, it's so easy to kind of lose yourself in a new place. And then I think fans relate to a lot of the personal growth that she's going through and realizing that, you know, whether it's outgrowing relationships or, um, you know, like who she used to be in Toronto. She's also from Toronto, which is really funny. That's Um, awesome. I know. And, you know, just taking yourself out of an environment where you're super comfortable and when you're at home and that you've grown, you've grown up in and then going to a place like Manitoba where it's completely out of your element you know it's 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 north and it's just completely different and you see it like throughout the whole season like Emma kind of struggles a bit to kind of adjust but she loves it and she's like this is new this is an adventure um I think fans really resonate with the fact that you know it's it's okay to outgrow the relationship that you've been in since you were in high school it's okay to outgrow you know the place that you've grown up in and it's scary. It really is scary ending something with someone that you've been with forever, that you thought that you were going to be with forever. Right. And then kind of venturing out to the unknown by yourself and realizing, you know, she hasn't been single since she was in high school because she's been dating Devin for forever. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I think fans relate to that and the journey of, you know, embracing the unknown and not having a plan finally. Yeah, that, that's that's always like fun because I, I mean whether you're whether you're dating someone or been with someone for so long and then just all of a, all of a sudden you're you want to 
you know, you're going with someone new or just like moving, like you've been in the same place, say for like 15 years, 20 years, and you just want to, and you outgrew it. Like you just want to move on and find like another place to live, probably move out of the city or, and find, and, and just start over new, like just find a new city, a new life, you know, like that, that, that happens a lot. Like a lot of people get stuck in one spot and they get down and depressed and they have to move on from that spot. Yeah, absolutely. I, I felt a lot like Emma for a long time. You know, Mm -hmm. I, I stayed in my hometown and I actually, I bit the bullet maybe four, I think it's been five years ago now where I just I was like, you know what? I need a new adventure. So I picked up all right. the crap and just moved to Vancouver. And I, yeah, I was living in Vancouver for about four years before I booked SkyMed. And then I moved back to Toronto, then went straight to Manitoba. Nice, nice. Yeah, so I, I, I get it. I mean, I think life needs to be uncomfortable sometimes. And that's how anyone could grow. It's really, it's really scary though. I'm not going to lie. Oh yeah. It's, because it, it's something new and, and you don't know what's going to happen when you get to that place. And so, so yeah, of course it's scary. Exactly. And it's scary, but there's also a part of you that's excited by how scared you are. Yes. And you're like anything could happen. Cause you're like, at first you're like, <laughs> Oh my God, anything could happen. But then you're like, anything could happen. Like the possibilities are endless. I could be. Right? I could start over. I could be whoever I want to be, or I could be finally myself, maybe even like, cause I know Emma, Emma felt really, I'm not going to say repressed, but I'm, I'm sure ju- judging by, you know, like the things that she said to Devin and like yeah. how the dialogue was that she felt like she had to conform to what he wanted in a wife or a girlfriend or a fiance. Like there's a scene where I don't want to wear the dress that I want to wear to our own engagement party because of what he said. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard in relationships because there's that pressure of knowing what someone wants you to be. And then you be like, Whoa, that's not me. And then, and then (laughs) just like Emma, you question every single thing. You're like, is this even real anymore? What, what is this? Like, this isn't (laughs) what I signed up for. And you know, it's, it's an interesting thing growth oh it is definitely is (laughs) and um so was there how 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 did it feel to have like when when you found out that sky med was the number one streaming show on paramount plus like how did you feel about that that must have been such an awesome feeling to have the number one show oh my gosh so first of all i want to say that Mercedes Morris, who plays Lexi, mm-hmm. she just posted a story saying that this is our one year SkyMed anniversary where we all flew in to Winnipeg, Manitoba. And we were like, this is the day. So August 18th is our oh, one wow. year anniversary. Really? It is. Yeah, like today. So it's crazy oh, that wow. we have this interview. Um, <laughs> but it, honestly, having the number one show and it being my first series regular show, mm-hmm. like, how could I complain about anything? You know, like I was so stoked. I was so happy, just so ecstatic for Julie and Vanessa, who are, who's the writers and yeah. the showrunner. And like, come on, like it's, it's crazy. Cause it was number one in the U S it's um, it, I think it charted top five on um, international something, international um, shows that are the most oh, popular God. in the U S So it's crazy. I'm so glad everyone's liking it though. Like it's, it's like I said in the beginning, it's, it's, it's a show that has a little bit of everything for everyone. Well, yeah, of course. I'm just grateful. Truthfully, just really, really grateful. Oh, wow. I'm, 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 I'm like really shocked that like, you know, on this date while we're doing the interview is like the one year anniversary. I'm like, wow, that's, that's crazy how it happened, how, how, it got set up for this date on the anniversary of the show. <laughs> I know it's wild. It's so wild how the universe works sometimes. I know, right? <laughs> and, um, and and how how was it like being on set for for the show? Like like did you did you have to actually get in like a plane and stuff, or or was that just like props and all that? 
Um, so Emma is uh she's an ER nurse. Yeah. I'm hoping she becomes a flight nurse next season. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But um, so I think at the beginning of all of us getting together, they threw us in a plane together, like all the okay. pilots and the nurses mixed all together. And they just okay. wanted us to bond and have this experience of being in this tiny plane. And it was <laughs> awesome. It was so cool. <laughs> But I have really bad anxiety. And a part of me was like, oh my God, this is so tiny. And Natasha, who plays our Haley, she just like held my hand. She's like, it's gonna be okay. And she was just like talking to talking to me the whole time and just like making sure that I was okay. And it really did bond us. So yeah, we, we oh, wow. used real planes. Um, we also had like a hydraulic plane in studio so that they could yeah. film interiors for it. Um it was fun. I wish I could have shot in the hydraulic plane it's so cool but um yeah fingers crossed for next season yeah definitely and and did you have to actually like learn any any nurse stuff for 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 playing and like for playing a nurse <laughs> oh absolutely we did i think like a week-long thing of like medical training AT oh my god training. uh pilot training for you know obviously the pilots um, we like had this whole PowerPoint presentation of us taking notes and everything. Wow. Um, but of course we, um, we also had medical Steve, shout out to medical Steve on set to make sure that everything was very, very genuine and very well done. Cause we didn't want okay. it to be this sloppy, you know, you see a lot of shows and you're like, oh my God, that's very inaccurate. We just yeah. wanted it to be <laughs> as accurate as possible. And Julie and Vanessa made sure of that, which is awesome. It's just it's as accurate as possible, I would say. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And I always ask guests this when I have them on the show, like, um, was there any cool behind the scenes stories that happened while you were filming? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so in the wolf episode, um, we, the wolf was so sweet. So the wolf is actually half husky, I think, and then half wolf. Okay which was really cool. And like, when I met it, it was just the happiest dog ever kept <laughs> wagging its tail. It was just like licking me. I'm like, this is so sweet, but I'm not afraid of it, I guess. And we were kind of having a difficult time um, getting it to look scary. Uh... Like it kept wagging its tail and smiling. And like Ron, <laughs> who is our, um, Ron Murphy, he's our, uh, that, that blocks, that block director. Yeah. And he was like, can we get it to growl? And like, it was just an off day. Cause like, there was also a rooster just like, Oh my God. Thing in the background, but it was, it was like 11 PM in the afternoon. <laughs> also. So we don't know why this rooster was roosting. <laughs> so it was hilarious. I mean, I thought it was really funny at the time, but obviously <laughs> we're just trying to get this shot to keep going with our day, but stuff like that was really funny. And also any, any scenes when all eight of us were together was okay. just like, it was just so chaotic because we would, you know, we're just fooling around and we're just having fun with each other. And, yeah. you know, all eight of us together, they're the best cast. Like, they're so much fun. They're hilarious. Um, when we did survival training, the survival training episode, mm -hmm. um, and we're all around um, Ace, who plays Bodhi on the bear trap like we couldn't stop laughing because of all the things that kept happening. And <laughs> it's just it was just so much fun. The entire experience truthfully <laughs> wow also that that definitely sound sounds like a really fun set uh, i mean i i i done like a couple like very low budget horror horror like horror films like real low budget <laughs> and, uh, those but, are like, so fun though they are and i like i'm actually in one currently like currently filming one and and we we filmed in just last week and we filmed in a a comic book shop and just like the cast in the comic book shop we were just like messing with around with each other and talking about like comics and horror movies and it like it's just like such a fun time when you're on on set with like other actors and actresses directors it's it's honestly a blast and especially with something that's low budget you guys can really <laughs> go for it and like yeah, exactly. have the best time so, no i love that indie projects are <laughs> so great in that aspect because you, you're it is a lot of fun there's so much it is yeah fun, you know 
I love that. I love that so much. Nice. <laughs> and, um, what do you what do you like doing during your free free time when you're not involved with doing shows or auditioning? Oh my gosh, don't ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's always like, oh, like what's your hobbies? Everyone always has like really interesting hobbies. Me and my girlfriend Juana, we were talking about this the other day, and she was like, Everyone keeps telling me to do yoga. I just don't want to do yoga. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I, I feel you, girl. I feel you. Um, I mean, I'm very work focused. Like anything okay. that I do, I feel like it just somehow carries this back way to work. Um, I'm currently in the process of writing my first feature film. Oh, um, sweet. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. It's been, it's been a work in progress for years. Like it's always lived in my head and I finally, mm -hmm. I finally have some time off between seasons. So I'm just getting the story down finally and writing it and really thinking about funding and everything like that. Um, it's very early stages, but it's definitely a passion project. And nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm excited for it. But now that you asked me that question about my hobbies and stuff, I feel like I really need to find one that's not work related. <laughs> like me and Mercedes were talking about this yesterday too, because I, I had tried this new exercise class yesterday. Okay. It was like um like high intensity ballet almost. And she was like, man, I really need to like, just start doing things outside of acting. That's just for myself. And I think it's super important. It is like just having so much fun and not thinking about work sometimes, but I'm a workaholic, truthfully. Okay. I really am. <laughs> well, you know, if you, if you start the crowdfunding for the film, I'll, I'll do my best to push it. Cause I, I also run it all. A website too besides my video show so i'll post it on the site and with the crowdfunding link and all that oh that's so sweet thank you so much for that that means definitely definitely yes definitely and um i'm a big horror fan and i always ask that to, to guess this like do you watch any horror movies and if you do what are some that you like <laughs> <laughs> okay so truthfully I've I've been traumatized by horror movies. Oh, okay. Not, um, never mind then. <laughs> I, I know. I wish I liked them because of like the thrill and the adrenaline. Um, but one of the the horror movie that scarred me for life was The Ring. And I oh, watched God, it yes. way too young. Like I watched it way too young and I couldn't like open my closet for the longest time without like shitting my pants or being scared <laughs> or like even picking up the phone. I was like, I'm going to die in seven days. That's <laughs> it. Like, so after that whole experience, I was like, man, I think I just have too much anxiety yeah. to entertain myself with horror movies. Okay. But Hey, if you know any good ones that I can maybe like dip my toe into, maybe, maybe I'll change. Okay. It can't be nothing too scary right off the bat. Like you have to start with like a horror com comedy, like something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something light. Like we're talking like tier one of horror movies. Like you can't like throw me into the deep end. Yeah. There, there's actually a horror comedy I watched the other night that I never saw. It's a movie called called Suck. And it's about a vamp vamp vampire and he like chain, you know, he he bites the girl and changes her, and she's in this like heavy metal band, and then she eventually changes that each member of the band and it's like horror mixed with comedy oh my gosh okay that sounds hilarious that might be my next watch <laughs> okay. i'll let you know how it goes but that sounds hilarious <laughs> okay here you go <laughs> thank you for the suggestions though De definitely and what kind of music do you like listening to like what's on your playlist oh my gosh i have I like I, it's such a cop out answer, but I really do like everything. I think it depends on my mood. Okay. Um, but lately, I've been I've been listening to a lot of like the Black Keys. Oh yeah. Um, I know it's they're kind of old, but um, <laughs> I've been rewatching the OC as well. So like a lot of the soundtrack from there, like gotcha. Modest Mouse, um, like Pink the Silent, uh, yeah, stuff like that. So like indie music as well. But I also get into moods where I'm really into like 80s music. 
So nice. like flock of seagulls. Okay. Um, yeah, stuff like that. I have it's it's really random. But usually I'm into like hip hop and RB. So like music soul child, um, Usher. I love mm-hmm. Usher. Um yeah, if I'm working out like Tupac, Biggie and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, like, you kind of just need to get hyped. Uh like Doja Cat. I love yeah. Doja Cat. Um stuff like that I'm not I, I can't listen to a lot of music that's really popular on TikTok I don't know why that really bothers me <laughs> I purposely don't have TikTok my girlfriend's like get TikTok so I like I could send you things and I'm like can you just link it I really don't want to get into I don't want to go on that laugh come on now <laughs> I, know, I, I feel like I'm too old for TikTok I'm just too much of a boomer for it now but I mean they send me links anyways and I still see it so they can't they can't get mad at me you know <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really like i like all music i really do nice and if you were hanging out with your friends and decide to do a karaoke song which song would you choose oh wow <laughs> She's... um first of all i love karaoke okay um so that's i mean i'm asian no like, I, love, <laughs> I love karaoke um it's fun, but I have to be a certain level of drunk because I get shy. Like I could sing, but no one's ever heard me sing before, like actually sing before. Oh, wow. So I, I get kind of shy with that, um, unless I'm like really comfortable around you. Yeah. But I think it would be, <laughs> I think it would either be, um, actually me and my best friend Hamza, we always sing my boo to each other along with my best friend Taylor. We always do nice. my boo together. Nice. I don't know why. It's just such a fun song to do because there's two of us, right? Yes, like, yes. She does the Usher part. I do the Alicia Keys part and we just keep going back and forth. So like, that's really fun. Um, what else? Oh, or I'll do Good Life by Kanye because I, I don't even need the oh, words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't need the words. I, I just got them like I got it. Especially if you get like four tequila shots of me, I'm done. <laughs> I'm a lightweight, so like I, I'm good. <laughs> so, so what? What's your drink of choice? Is it tequila? Um, my drink of choice for yeah. karaoke, or just like my drink? Well, of no, choice? just just if you're out. <laughs> oh, I okay. So I've I don't really drink that much, just okay. because I'm such a lightweight that I'm like <laughs> don't really want to like do that right now, but um. My drink of choice is usually, I'm, I'm so basic. I'm so basic. Oh God, I'm going to cringe. Like, I'm going to cringe saying this, but like vodka crayon. Oh no, no, that's vodka great cran. though. Yeah, definitely. That's <laughs> so great. basic. Or like a nice white wine because I'm classy okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I, that's my cousin. She, she, she loves her wine and and she she just likes going out into her yard and with a glass of wine and listening to music and calling it a night <laughs> oh yeah she's about the vibes like the chill yeah. vibes I love that yeah I'm not I feel, I'm not sophisticated enough for red wine like you know how people do the whole like the whole swirl thing and oh my god it. yes yeah and I'm like <laughs> I don't smell the notes of like chocolate or wood, Linda. Like I, I'm just kind of here. Like we're just drinking. We're just having a good time. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've seen plenty of people doing that, and I, I just turn around, and look at them, and I give them like this weird look when they're like sniffing their wine glass and and <laughs> and just like taking a sip and saying, "I taste the aroma." I'm like, why? <laughs> like, I wish I could like I wish maybe my palate's not that sophisticated but you know I wish I could like damn like I want to smell the hints of like smoky wood too that's sick yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I I know you say you like you like working out a lot and um what is your like cheap cheap food like a uh, junk food that you like okay so it's so bad for you i me and my best friends sid tay and my brother preston we used to mm-hmm. do like these um taco bell slash kfc nights oh nice so in canada we have something called supreme fries i don't know if you guys have it over there in oh no is it, oh my God. Is it, is it like a mixture of taco bell and kfc okay so 
my god rocky you, you have to come <laughs> to canada just for this it's my okay. favorite. it's so bad for you but it's so good um so supreme fries is like fries french fries with uh like cheese sour cream uh green onions and like taco beef and tomato so it's like a taco just like on fries oh my god that sounds amazing it's so good but it's so bad for you well, of course it's bad for you but i mean it yeah. sounds so good yeah exactly like it's so good but it's so <laughs> bad and like that's my cheat meal for sure oh, like we'll do kfc like, we'll get like a bucket and then we'll all have well, yeah. fries and all that stuff but it's really nice. good Not, if anything, oh, man. winnipeg just for the supreme fries oh my god that sounds amazing i i, I now I have to go now. <laughs> you have to. You really do. And like, and then it, I don't know. It's just so good. Like over here in Canada, we have like a Taco Bell slash KFC. So they're like, I guess they had like a partnership, and they're still yeah, together. yeah. That's how that's how it is here too. Like oh, any cool. KFC is right next to a Taco Bell, or they're in the same building or merged together, and <laughs> that's how they get you. Because it's the convenience of it all. And you're like, oh, shit. Like, you know, I might as well pick up a bucket if I'm getting some fries. Like, I know. I know. Exactly. It's crazy. It's so crazy. <laughs> they, they just know. Marketing. Right? <laughs> and is there anything coming up next for you, too? I, I mean, I know I know you just got done with, with, with Sky Med and you're waiting for season two. And is there anything else coming up, too? Oh man. Um, so, so far I've, I've just been really focusing on writing and producing. Nice. Um, so that's always been like a dream of mine that I haven't ever really gotten around to yet until, you know, my time off and all this stuff, yeah. um, other than like auditioning and self-taping and stuff like that. That's really what I'm focused on at the moment. I'm just excited to be able to just get to writing and producing and all that stuff. So that's, what's coming up next. All right. Sweet. Nice. And lastly, like where can fans find find you at if they want to follow you? Oh yeah, absolutely. The plug. Um, so <laughs> on Instagram, it's Rebecca Kwan. And on Twitter, it's Rebecca Kwan, but there's an underscore right after the Kwan, because somebody took Rebecca Kwan without the underscore. And I want it back. Like I had it, <laughs> I had Rebecca Kwan a long time ago, like when Twitter just became a thing. And then oh. I deleted it and then I got back and you know, someone else took it. So like oh my if, God. if the Rebecca Kwan that has that Twitter account <laughs> is still watching this, let's talk. Let's talk. Because <laughs> I hate the underscore, it like kills me. But anyways, yeah, you can find me there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I want to th thank you so much for coming on the show. It was really, it, it was a lot of fun talking to you. Like you're, you're super funny. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I, I love, I love chatting and talking about SkyMed and everything. It was great. Yeah, definitely. And, and definitely tell our, our, our buddy that, that I said, hi, Praneet. <laughs> yes, I will. I promise. <laughs> Gotta love Pranit, honestly. Yeah, he's he's really awesome. I like him. He's the best, truthfully. <laughs> again, thanks, thanks again for doing this, and definitely have a great night and great weekend. Oh, Thanks. and ha happy anniversary of SkyMed. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me again, Rocco. So great meeting you. Yeah, it was really good meeting you, talking to you, laughing. Like you're really awesome. Thank you. Aww. All the best. Thanks. Bye. Bye.